Hey, what's going on, wonderful, magical people? My name's Ty, and welcome back to Spiral Monolith, a channel dedicated to magic, witchcraft, paganism, the occult, and tarot. And I thought I'd just um, make a video today as a follow-up to the introductory video I made last week, just chronicling my journey into magic and witchcraft and the occult and just my spirituality in general this far into my life. I yeah, really just felt inspired to open up a bit and so you folks can get to know me a little bit better and um, hopefully there'll be some stuff that some nuggets of wisdom and maybe some stuff that other beginners might be able to relate to or even experienced practitioners would would yeah it would be cool to start a discussion about all this stuff and how people kind of came into their craft and their practice i think it's always really interesting to hear other people's perspectives on this and because this is probably going to be quite a long video i don't feel obliged to stare at my face the whole time um, yeah, just feel free to do other stuff and listen. I mean, I do that to a lot of YouTubers I follow, so that's totally fine. But yeah, I thought I may as well just start off with, you know, with my childhood and my upbringing and how I was always kind of, I guess, surrounded by magic and the occult and spirituality, but just in various different forms that never really kind of stuck with me until a little bit later in my life. So I'm half Māori and I grew up a lot around you know, Māori spirituality and folklore and mythology. But then I also had quite a Christian upbringing as well. So at an early age, there was kind of a dichotomy for me in terms of, yeah, just in terms of thinking about religion and spirituality and really starting to question kind of mainstream monotheistic Abrahamic religions, you know, really from, from, from quite an early age. But yeah, I always had a fascination with the occult and the supernatural. You know, when I was a little kid, I was really into shows like The X-Files and um, yeah, really got into a lot of horror movies and literature, you know, stuff like Clive Barker and Anne Rice. And, you know, I was really fascinated with werewolves and vampires before Twilight. I'll just, I'll just tack that on the end there. I was never, never a Twilight fan, but I, I love, I still love, you know, um, you know, um, stories of vampires and, and werewolves, you know, urban legends and folk tales and tales of the supernatural, you know, that was the type of stuff that I really gravitated towards when I was a kid and I still gravitate towards now. I mean, yeah. And then when I got, you know, further into high school, I really got into, you know, like heavy metal and industrial music and, you know, started to get exposed to imagery and symbolism to do with the occult, you know, through getting into that more kind of underground, um, art and music and expression, you know, getting into industrial music, it was, you know, first time I've, I'd been exposed to concepts like chaos magic and other occult themes as well. And through heavy metal, you know, there's a lot of heavy imagery of, you know, not just Satanism, but also, you know, just paganism of all stripes there as well. And it gave me kind of a, 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 a fondness and an appreciation for that kind of symbology and, the philosophy around a lot of those types of beliefs, even though it really didn't stick with me at, at, you know, at that stage in my life. But getting into that type of music and art and culture, you know, did give me a sense of, you know, that I was touching a hidden world, you know, a world that was away from kind of the mainstream and, you know, that was hidden from, you know, the, the rest of society. And it was, you know, really exciting, you know, to get involved with, you know, underground and extreme and transgressive and avant-garde and experimental art and music and culture and all that kind of thing. It really gives a sense of, you know, tapping into a hidden world, which, you know, in a lot of ways kind of, yeah, turned me into a very kind of, you know, curious person, you know, the, the seduction of the mystery and the seduction of the, um, the hidden and the esoteric, you know, is something that has always been with me all my life, I think. Being drawn to hidden knowledge that kind of lie outside our ideas of the status quo and even of physical reality itself. Wanting to push through the veil of kind of mundanity and of, you know, everyday reality and to find the kind of the wonder and the excitement of, you know, what might be hiding in the shadows. Which is why generally like a lot of mainstream music and, you know, media just like doesn't really do it for me. I think um, I need, you know, a little bit of mystery and a little bit of danger and a little bit of... Um, yeah, the unknown and, you know, to be challenged, to have my perceptions challenged a little bit more. So yeah, my journey into, you know, that side of art and culture, you know, it, it does really go hand in hand with my journey into my spirituality as well. 
And then, yeah, later in my high school years, a family member of mine came out of the proverbial broom closet. And it was, yeah, the first time in my life that I knew a real life witch. And it was the type of thing where it's just like, you can do that. So yeah, they were probably the biggest real life inspiration to me in terms of, you know, coming into my spirituality and exploring it. And they're still, you know, a really amazing and wonderful, you know, support and inspiration and guiding light to me through my journey. It's nice to have a member of the family who's kind of, you know, into this stuff as well that you can, you know, trade crazy stories and you can, um, yeah, just have that support is, you know, I feel really lucky and really blessed to be able to, to have them in my life for sure. But that wasn't when it really, you know, stuck with me for good throughout my, you know, teens and early twenties, I identified pretty much as an atheist. You know, I, um, leaning towards agnostic, I was always kind of very open-minded to spirituality and very open-minded to, you know, all that kind of stuff, but I always kind of found it a little bit silly. You know, I never thought, you know, stuff like magic and yoga and meditation were for me at all. You know, in fact, I was adamant that practices like meditation were just, you know, just did not work for me at all. And it was something that I just would never have, you know, part of my life. Yoga as well. I thought, nah, you know, that's, that's just not me, man. That's just not me. But I love that happy crap now. <laughs> so, you know, I've definitely changed a lot as a person. But then two books kind of came into my life that kind of, you know, started to plant the seeds of my spiritual journey. Um, one of those was the Paganism Reader edited by Chaz S. Clifton. And the other one was The Occult by Colin Wilson. And, you know, the Paganism Reader isn't exactly the most kind of renowned or, you know, um, well-known um, pa pagan witchcraft text out there. But it was, for me, it was a really kind of good taster into paganism of kind of all different branches and all different stripes, I mean. And then The Occult by Colin Wilson is a book that I still, you know, go back to every now and again. It's probably the best book I've come across so far of someone trying to cram the entire just gargantuan concept of the occult, just cram it all into one book. And, you know, it's almost 900 pages long, so, so there you go. But again, just like the Paganism Reader, it was just a really good overview of the occult and of all the different kind of um, ideas and concepts and philosophies and practices that one might be able to explore. I mean, it doesn't go kind of um, super in depth into all of them, you know, for, for obvious reasons. But um, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend that book for anyone just kind of dabbling and kind of, you know, wanting to... I guess, you know, get an idea of what the occult actually kind of is. So I was at university at this stage and I decided to go to my university's, you know, pagan club and, um, you know, kind of dipped in and out of it kind of throughout the years and ended up living with that aforementioned family member who I, um, yeah, who, who, I, who I learned a little bit from and they gifted me my first tarot deck, which is, you know, now my prized kind of personal tarot deck that I read, that I just use for personal readings only. And, you know, I went to a few kind of magic rituals and workshops and stuff over the years. But even though, you know, so, so I dabbled, I dabbled, I dipped my toes in and out of it, but it, it never really stuck until a little bit later on. And then through my journeys into atheism and getting really into atheism, I discovered non-theistic Satanism. So even though I still identified as an atheist, I thought, you know, this was a really cool kind of um, branch of it that I really identified a lot and I became ever closer to kind of finding my my people in terms of you know or my tribe in terms of my personal beliefs and perceptions and I found that I was attracted to both the Church of Satan and the Satanic Temple pretty equally I mean um, even though I've got you know a few issues with Levain Satanism I still reading the Satanic Bible um, was a big milestone for me in my journey and I really vibed with the concept of that religion as a whole. And the Satanic Temple, I just think are a really kind of awesome, inspiring organization. I really dig their vibe and dig their ethos. And, you know, I really kind of, um, for me, I think they encompass a lot of what, you know, being the adversary is all about, you know, fighting against oppression and fighting against the status quo and, you know, freedom of expression and freedom of speech and all that kind of stuff. I, you know, just facing up to those power structures in a really kind of mischievous and 
thought provoking kind of way. I think, you know, it was just something that I really vibe with. But it was at that point, I also started to feel my atheism kind of receding a little bit and it started to feel like I needed a little bit more magic in my life. And so reading the satanic rituals after I read the satanic Bible, like that was my first kind of insight into left hand path magic, ritual magic and all that kind of thing as well. And it made me think a lot about spirituality and, you know, what spirituality could be and what it could be for me in my life. And it was not long after that when I became really interested in Tantra as well. So I became, you know, super involved with the Tantra community in the city I was living in at the time, helped to um, organize events and gatherings and all that kind of thing. And it was through that that I became really interested in meditation and breath work and yoga, especially Kundalini yoga. And um, I'm going to make a whole video about Kundalini yoga and how it's helped me in my magical path, but that's a practice that I really absolutely fell in love with. I still try and practice it almost every day. And, you know, it's really helped me to hone my magical abilities and it's really helped me, I think, grow pretty rapidly as a practitioner. And experiencing my first Kundalini awakening was another huge milestone in my spiritual journey. It wasn't a full blown awakening, you know, the, the type where you just like, just have like a full on, DMT trip, but it was like a really kind of, it was a profound psychedelic experience and it was just kind of like, oh man, you know, you can have a psychedelic experience just through doing yoga. That's crazy. <laughs> and so it kind of really opened up my mind to a lot of other spiritual practices that I kind of just, um, wasn't paying attention to, or again, thought that just like weren't for me or, you know, were, were just like not what I was about including becoming more involved in my local pagan community again. So I started going along to this community's um, monthly full moon rituals, and it was um, full moon rituals designed for pagans and practitioners from all traditions and all walks of life to kind of come together and do a full moon ritual together. And this was when I discovered the reclaiming tradition, which um, I actually still, yeah, really, really love as a, as a tradition. And I know some left-hand path people might kind of, you know, turn, turn, their, turn their nose up at it a little bit, but I think it's just a really beautiful beautiful and really necessary kind of tradition in magic and in paganism to have. And I think that for me, when I was just starting out in my magical journey, it gave me a lot of really awesome um, foundation skills and foundation practices to for which to build my magical practice on top of. You know, it really gives you kind of a, yeah, it gives you a good foundation for which to build your build your practice, whatever tradition you end up, I think like um, you're reading the Spiral Path by Starhawk, you know, and maybe yeah, getting involved in maybe some you know your local reclaiming community a little bit. If you're just starting out, that that gives like a really good kind of just um, yeah foundation course in how to do magic and to how how to be a witch. And I also started going along to a lot of the events and things that the local OTO chapter in my city were running. Met a lot of really cool, wonderful people through that and got, you know, um, exposed to even more kind of wisdom and ideas that I, you know, hadn't really thought of otherwise. And even though, you know, the Lema and um, other kind of um, traditions like that, you know, the Golden Dawn and ceremonial magic, I don't think they're they're quite for me. I tend to find ceremonial magic quite rigid, even though I've incorporated a lot of practices like the LBRP and whatnot into my rituals and everything. Um, I still really vibe more with that, you know, nature-based kind of more folk magic kind of kind of vibe. So, um, but learning about that side of magic and learning about how the practitioners achieve the things they do and, you know, incorporating some of their practices into my own craft has been, you know, a really wonderful, beneficial thing as well. But I began to gravitate a lot towards kind of more, um, you know, Luciferianism and the stuff that Michael W. Ford um, teaches, as well as, you know, the stuff that uh, Become a Living God do and, you know, learning and connecting with practitioners through that. It made me realize that, you know, even though I'm still kind of a, you know, um, yoga doing, pagan, raver, hippie at heart, there's still a lot of, you know, beauty and wisdom and wonder and excitement and challenge and growth to be found, you know, within the darker side of magic and spirituality. 
And then, like I said in my introductory video, you know, meeting Lilith for the first time gave me that confirmation that, oh, wow, okay, I really am on my path. I am on my way to finding where I truly belong in my spirituality and that there are deities and spirits that, you know, are reaching out to me and are offering me, you know, really amazing, beautiful support and, um, and yeah, that's when I knew that I was really going in the right direction and that this was for me. And right now I just want to keep exploring and experimenting just as much as I can. So who knows, maybe I will join in some esoteric ceremonial magical order, or maybe I'll just get kidnapped by some, you know, burner hippies and, you know, go down that reclaiming tradition side of it. I know that I do really gravitate more towards that, you know, nature based, more like folk magic side of things. So I'd really like to find uh, some type of system that balances the light and the dark in a really you know, healthy, pragmatic way. And I did start to despair a lot about, you know, not being part of a specific order or not practicing, you know, a specific system or being part of a specific tradition. But, um, you know, as a really um, wonderful friend and mentor to me, you know, told me recently, you know, don't worry about trying to find your path. You're already on it. You know, you're already practicing magic. You're already kind of you know, um, finding and finding the things that you vibe with and developing your own way of doing things. And I think that's really awesome advice for any beginner in this kind of thing is like, don't worry too much about, you know, fitting in or, um, or finding a place to, to belong within the magical community. Because, you know, I, yeah, I, I got really bummed out about that a lot, especially with the, um, yeah, with the, um, you know, pagan communities that I was, you know, involved in, in the past, you know, like, even though they were really amazing, wonderful, um, beautiful, welcoming people, I always felt like, you know, a bit of an outsider, you know, always being the outsider of the outsiders has <laughs> kind of always been my deal. But in my opinion, the world of magic and the occult and paganism is just like way too broad to try and, you know, um, you know, it, it, I feel like, you know, you might be doing yourself a disservice if you just kind of, uh, yeah, just kind of focusing into one tiny aspect when there's like so much to explore. But then again, if a specific order or a specific tradition is exactly what you're after, then just go for it, man. You know, I mean, there's a lot of beauty in that as well. If anything, it gives you a lot of discipline and community as well, which is like super important. I think even if you're a solitary practitioner, I think having a community is, you know, people that you can, yeah, trade, trade war stories with and, you know, just like, you know, deep dive into concepts and, you know, like just, just get those confirmations and get that kind of that other side of the, um, of an experience that you might not have thought of before. And then of course, learning the tarot was another big milestone in my uh, magical um, journey. And, you know, even if you think the tarot might not be for you, I think if you're a beginner, just even, you know, just, just learning how to do it will give you just so much knowledge um, about the occult. You know, it, it is so many layers of knowledge to the tarot that it's, it's actually kind of mind boggling. I mean, you've got um, astrology, you've got alchemy, you've got the, the, the Kabbalah, you've got, um, yeah, all sorts of stuff to, to delve into numerology and planetary magic and all sorts of stuff that you can really kind of deep dive into with the tarot. And I am, you know, just on the tail end of doing the um, tarot mastery course through Become a Living God. And if, if you have the opportunity to do that course, like do it. It's It's been one of the best one of the best investments I've made into my magic. It was, it's been a really, really wonderful experience. And yeah, it's, it's helped me kind of, um, yeah, explore concepts through the tarot that I, yeah, just, just wouldn't have, wouldn't have thought of before. So that's been a really, you know, so learning the tarot has been, uh, uh, yeah, a huge, a huge jump for me in terms of my magical journey and, you know, learning a form of divination that I really love and enjoy and that I've resonated with, for a long time, I think, you know, when I was going back to, you know, what I was talking about with my university days and, um, you know, um, being a film student and watching the films of Alejandro Jodorowsky, especially The Holy Mountain, you know, that, that you know, that movie is also another, <laughs> another good deep dive, uh, beginner's deep dive into the occult that I would recommend as well. So, um, yeah, so I think I am going to leave it at that. I think this video has gone on for, for, for quite a while now. I'm starting to rant and rave a bit.
But um, yeah, hope you found that interesting. Hope you um, were able to maybe relate to some of the topics that I talked about. And if you have your own stories and experiences with any of those topics, feel free to leave your experiences down in the comments section. And yeah, we'd love to get a discussion going about this. I think what's the other thing that's been really helpful for me is listening to other practitioners talk about their experiences and their perspectives of what their craft and their practice means to them and how they came into it as well as also, you know, um, really fascinating and, you know, really inspiring. So yeah, feel free to get a, to get a discussion going if you like. And as I mentioned a couple of times, I'll also be expanding and talking about a lot of the topics that I talked about in this very kind of broad, just kind of overview video. I really want to expand on um, a bunch of these topics as their own separate videos. So, you know, keep an eye out for um, videos on some of the specific to topics that I talked about here. So yeah, anyway, I'll, I'm going to um, get out of here, but um, I'll see you all on Monday for your weekly tarot forecast. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, I've been really blown away by the amazing support from you all thus far. It's been, yeah, yeah, really, um, yeah, really inspiring for me and really exciting for me to keep going with this content and keep going with this channel. So um, yeah, just thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed so far. Um, if you like this video and um, you want to hear me rant and ramble a bit more, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. And yeah, I will see you all later. Many blessings to everybody. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and um, I'll talk to you again soon. All right, catch you later.